excited. So many people are engaged here. This is like, this is good. This is Michael and I, when we got married, it's all, we've almost been married 24 years. I know. So surprising, right? I mean, I look so young. I got married when I was 12, right? No, just kidding. And we're not even going to ask about how old I am going to be tomorrow, okay? It's not going to be, yeah, it's not a good, not a good age. Actually, I could even like skip over, have you ever had like a birthday where you're like, you know what, I could just skip over this one and just remain the same age, and I'm totally okay with that. And that's been me for a couple of years now. So, um, so we have almost been married 24 years, um, 24 years in December, right? Is that right? Is that right? No, it's December. December 17th is our anniversary. I know that, but we were married in 94. So is that, yeah, is that right? No, that'll be 23 then, right? Yes. Okay. Anyway, 24. something like that. Yeah, we're, you know what is so funny is Michael and I, in so many ways, we're very different. Our personalities are very different. In some ways, I, you know, he's he remembers things like dates and things like that a little bit more than me. And usually, that's the female that does that. But um, but for some reason, and Michael is. I think the, what she's trying to say is, I am the female in this marriage. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> not always, but sometimes. And she is the male. No, but um, but anyway, Honest but we wish. Ever. Yeah. But we wish we would have, we truly, I mean, like, Michael's dad, for those of you that don't know, Michael's dad wrote a ton of books on marriage, um, like, before he passed, you know, graduated to heaven. I mean, he wrote, like, 60 of them. I mean, like, a ton, a ton of books. And so he gave us, you know, a so little bit of. about us tonight. Not yeah, I know, but he gave us a little bit of. He gave us a little. Away. He gave us. Fresh. I've already talked about Died it in the in ladies room. thing. I yeah, he did die in our house. Still but under suspicion. No. <laughs> Michael. He was in there with a pillow. <laughs> I was not. He was very weak. No. I love that man. Don't you dare. Oh, I can tease about anything. No. Yeah, just wait until we get home, and then you're going to get back to Daniel Marcus. So you're saying we're going to have fun at home. Uh, not like uh, that. <laughs> anyway. We'll just call it makeup sex. <laughs> No, but but we wish we would have actually, we knew about the concept of honor. And um, we're, tonight we're going to start with, are we going to start with the personal responsibility? So we're going to start with, okay, it starts with you. Um, and we, we knew the concept of honor, which honor, I always thought honor was like something that, you, you know, men of valor and, oh, you honored your, your parents maybe. But how do you honor your spouse? How do you, how do you do that? And we kind of learned that concept a little bit. And honor basically means that you're placing high value on someone. You're placing high, they don't necessarily have to do anything or say anything, but you are placing high value on them. So we knew what that concept was. We knew what honor. And so we were kind of like, okay, that's great. But then when we actually got married, there was a kind of all kind of fell apart because, you know, I was not really honoring him and he was not really honoring me. And so then we just kind of How fell. How many of you have heard our love story before? Yeah, I was <laughs> Say it again. I'm glad you enjoy our pain and suffering. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't give the whole love story. No. But we met at university, and I fell in love with her. She didn't know who I was. <laughs> and uh, this is hard for me to say still to this day. Yes. But in essence, to get her to notice me, I had to become a male cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just lost the respect of all you mm -hmm. South Africans, <laughs> especially the Africana. <laughs> and, so, and so, you know, we had this crazy long romance story, and it was like just miracle after miracle after miracle upon miracle. She actually got engaged while I was interested in you. I was the first person she showed her engagement ring to. Yeah. I was sick because at that point I realized now I'm just a male cheerleader, <laughs> not a male cheerleader to meet the girl. And, you know, one thing led to another. Your fiance had a very unfortunate accident. <laughs> no. Somebody pushed him off a very tall bridge. No. I don't know who. No, he did not. No one ever proved it was me. No, 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 no. That did not happen. No, that was actually really crazy how God brought us together. But we had this, like, amazing love story. And... We were young, and we were deeply in love, and we were on cloud nine, and then we got married. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all are married? Well, we have several. You didn't Wait, see it. That's not very many. How many of y'all are married? 
No, but there's you, lots you of people that are people. engaged. But there's lots of people that are engaged How here. How many of you are engaged? They're, look. That that's like, does not constitute a lot of people. Well, there are more. There's the first time they couple. had their raise hand. No, there were more the first time. There's, they're not raising their hands right How now. How many of you are liars? Raise your hand. No, serious, Michael. Serious. So many of them. Serious. They're or don't raise your hand if you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, and that's, that's why we love what we do, because you, you need to understand that your relationship and the success of it is about the choices you make, the choices you make, and what you know. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most of you don't have a clue <laughs> on how to be married well. Sorry. <laughs> because <laughs> cause you get married, right? And you're in love, and there's all that eros and erotic kind of fun, sexy feelings, and it's woohoo! And then, like us, 18 hours into our marriage, going yep. on our honeymoon, we yep. weren't speaking to each other. We weren't. We weren't. Literally 18 hours into our married life, I wanted out. <laughs> I was like, this was a mistake. I rushed. We didn't think this through. Because we didn't date very long. How long no. did we date? We dated. July. We started dating in July, and we got married in December. Two so weeks after she was supposed to marry Satan. <laughs> did we mention but that's I'm what sorry, he called the other guy? That yeah. Her fiance's name, Satan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not really his the name. Devil, also that's known as the no. Evil <laughs> that was not his name either. The evil one. Yeah. Yeah. That was the yeah. Decrepit. That was not his name either. No. None of those were his names. The forsaken. Yes, that was it. That was it. No. <laughs> and so, can you imagine? Right? We haven't even been dating very long. You've been with that loser for how long? <laughs> like four years. God. Four years. He was a real chump. <laughs> huh? And there's another word I learned. We don't say those. What am I allowed to say? Is it really insulting if I didn't know it was insulting? Or it's still insulting. Yes. Who yes, it is. That they want to know what word I said. No, 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 no. Robert, I'll Please. Let you decide. Yay, See, Robert don't Gilbert. tell so, Natash. Where's Natash? She's no, a little more Natasha's sound in judgment. You can't even hear anymore. Bernita, where's she? So I'm at a mug and bean in the mall. Very innocently, I'm with uh, Marga. Oh my gosh, yeah, no! I'm First word. of all, that isn't even a good I mean, word it for a even man. Make sense. As an American, I have to tell you how this word ended up meaning that this other and thing it's not even a, is really disturbing. It's not even a male thing. No, it is not. And so I'm at the mug and bean, and they got me a coffee, and it had some treats on the side, and I went to Monica and said, would you like my cookie? <laughs> and she goes, excuse me? I went, my cookie, stop saying that. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? You can't take food and turn it into another thing. <laughs> Especially that thing. Something we beloved in, te in Texas. We like our cookies, little. Oh! <laughs> you just did that. Well, because I innocently, that's what we. It's a little. It's a thing you. Call it's a little treat. Anymore. It's a little treat. Anyway. It's a treat. Anyway, <laughs> see. Okay. All right. All right. Back to back to us. Back to what we want to be talking about. Out of biscuits. Yes. Which is funny because it kind of means anyway. No. So anyway, it's 18 hours into our married life. We're not yes. speaking to each other. Yes. And what we're talking about in terms of personal responsibility, it doesn't feel very sexy, right? So when we wrote a book called The Surprising Way to a Stronger Marriage, uh, that is an entire book just on personal responsibility because it is really the key foundational thing that if you don't get this, you're not going to get anything else. Yeah. It's literally that important because you know I often describe it as it's the fuel that drives the engine of a healthy relationship. So you can learn all the cute things and tools and communication and, techniques. And we'll be talking about those. Yeah, but, but if you don't have this, it's not going to run. In fact, you'll probably end up using whatever you do learn that could be good. You'll use it for bad. And you'll use it to attack each other and to insult each other. And so personal responsibility, the original title I wanted... <laughs> was the greatest advice no one wants to hear. And the reason is, most of you, and be honest, you don't have to raise your hands, but most of you, when there's a problem, whose fault is it? The other person, 
right? Right? Oh, no. She used to tell me when we first got married, because I'd go, hey, you're yelling at me. <laughs> and she'd say, no. No, I'm, I'm not. not. No, I'm not. And do you want to hear me yell? <laughs> I can show you what I can show you what yelling yeah, sounds like. You would also say you make me mad. Yell. Yell. Mad. Angry. Now here this is the trillion dollar question. Did I, from my behavior, good or bad, do I make her yell at me? Oh, is that not you painful? Say that in these walls, but outside of these walls, you're like, mm-hmm. That is or the, when I would shut down. That was the hardest thing for me to actually start to gain control over because this is the reason why this is so important is because other people making you mad, okay, other people doing other things, do, did I feel set up to react poorly? Yes. That, there, it, I know that that sounds like, oh, Amy, that's just a different way of saying the same thing. The difference is, is one says I still have a choice. People can set me up, but I'm the one that actually slams the ball down. I'm the one that actually engages in that negative behavior. I'm the one that actually takes the bait. Michael may bait me on, people may bait you on, people may cut you off in traffic, people may do a lot of things that set you up to react poorly. But how you choose to react, that's the thing that is gonna make or break your relationship. Because the more I said to Michael, no, if you wouldn't have done whatever it was, and I, you know, let's just go ahead and just say it. As a, as a female, there's a part of me, if you wouldn't have been such an idiot, then I wouldn't have gotten mad. Or you wouldn't have been so irresponsible, or you wouldn't have been, and I basically, when I do, do things like that, I'm pointing the finger, and I'm probably in my head saying, this is who you are. Could you, and, and even when I said the word idiot, there was a part of me, I went, oh, oh. I don't know if you guys do this. But if every time you say a word that is a character assassination, an idiot is basically is a character, right? It's characterizing someone as an idiot. If you do those things, I'm just going to tell you right now, that's damaging your relationship. If you are now he sitting here, and please hear this, if you are engaged, do not call people names. Just don't. Well, you're acting like an idiot. One time Michael said to me, Amy, you're acting like, and he said this word that was like, like a witch. And I said, oh, no, you didn't. You did not just call me that. And he said, no, 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 no. I didn't call you that. I said you were acting like that. It was an adjective. Yeah, it wasn't good. It was the last time he ever did that. Yes, it was. And that was about 20 three years ago. Um, but, and a half. but the reason why I say the reason why I say that is because I can feel whatever I'm feeling. Like I can feel um, I can feel let's see if Michael's making me angry, I can feel ignored. I can feel unimportant. I can feel um, frustrated. Me feeling something versus Michael being an idiot, which way do you think is going to come across and get a, going to help our relationship? Me calling someone a name? or me saying I'm frustrated. Me saying I'm frustrated is gonna be a whole lot easier for someone to handle than for me to point the finger at you and to say you are X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. If I do that, so I want, so this is the thing about taking responsibility. I'm gonna take responsibility. Now, if I can say, I, I just gave you two scenarios, and everybody kind of got it. You got it intuitively. The stuff that Michael and I talk about, it's not rocket science, but it's, re, it's a discipline. It's a discipline to be able to say, I feel frustrated versus you, blah, 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 right? That's, that's, that's a difficult thing to do. And guess what? And does it always work out good? If I say, Michael, guess what? I'm really getting really frustrated right now. What could he say? Don't care. Don't care, right? Or that's a you problem. Exactly. Or this and is so like your mother. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? He could, right? But then what happens in our relationship? If I do, if I'm trying, and you guys are all within earshot of this, right? So you're all basically in the place where you're saying, okay, which way is going to be better? So if we say to you, okay, this we've all got it down, then I'm not gonna accuse you. I'm gonna talk about my feelings. 
versus accuse you of any of a character, bad thing, of who you are. If we're within earshot of that, then guess what? When Michael says that to me, what then do I have? Now what? I responded with the best way that I know how. I took responsibility for my thoughts, my feelings, my, my reaction. I didn't point the finger at him, and he still handled himself poorly. Now what? Now what? Now what do we do? Deny sex. <laughs> no, we oh. don't do that. Okay. That's not nice either, right? But if he, if he handles himself poorly, now do I have to handle myself poorly back? Nope. Is it, does he make it harder? Yep. But now what? Now my, what might we do? Well, what's important to understand is on that day when you're facing our maker, there are no excuses. I'm just telling you right now. If you were a jerk back to the Lord, you were a jerk. <laughs> you can't sit there and go, yeah, but, you know, I rejected them or I divorced them or I, I annihilated them. I, you know, I did all these cruel things because, because they were cruel to me. Right? Are there any excuses with, with Christ? I mean, that's what's really tough when you start reading, especially Jesus' words specifically, is there's no out. I mean, he takes it really far, right? Like what, what Pastor Greg talked about. Oh, that's what I was about to just say. Absor it I'm sorry. It was when he said the word absorbing injustice. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so just like hit me. Because I'm a huge justice person. Like I see things in black and white, and I want justice, and I want to do the right thing. And when people don't do the right thing, I want to go, oh, you didn't do the right thing. That's what I want to do, right? But what did he just teach us yesterday? Tells to absorb injustice. So what would it look like for me to absorb the injustice of Michael just being, I don't care. I'd be like, wow, do I just, if it keeps happening, it keeps happening, then that's kind of, and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse, that's emotional abuse, right? But if we are able to talk, for me to be able to respond and be able to go, wow, okay, now I'm frustrated and now I'm hurt. <laughs> now my feelings are really hurt. And then what, then now what have I done? I've made it even harder for him to react poorly, right? Because now I've said, because guess what? What do I know? And this is something about the, the two of you, it, it, when you're engaged, you, you, have this, you have this positive view of each other, and you're like, he loves me. He loves me. Okay. Hey, but uh, the longer we go, and the, the longer we're in, you know, in this marriage, and, and we're all that, and you have children, all that stuff, it's hard to kind of have that thing of, he loves me. But I want to tell you, I want you to invest in he loves me. Okay? So if I am out back there and I've now frustrated and now I'm hurt, but in my head I'm going to go, you know what? I'm frustrated and I'm hurt, but I know he loves me. Babe, what are we going to do now? Because I'm really hurt and frustrated. Now what? Why don't we give them a real example? All right. Let's do it. I get to be the hero. Oh, no. No, you don't get to be the hero. No. Yeah, no. No, they like me right now. No. No, they don't. <laughs> but but no. do you say, hold on, but, but let's just stay with that one just a little bit longer. But do you see that, but do you see that even in that one, that my, it, you make it hard, when you, I handle myself well, when you handle yourself well and you keep to your feelings, it makes it really hard for the other person to keep reacting and keep doing something negative. Can I highlight that? Yeah. Because this is the problem. You don't want to turn the other cheek because you genuinely believe that this person that you chose to marry is just going to keep hitting you. And so, well, I'm not going to do it. I need to defend myself and crack back and fight back because if I just turn the other cheek, they're going to keep him. How many of you think and be honest, how many of you think you're with someone who's pure, unadulterated evil? <laughs> My daughter does. <laughs> Must be your mother. <laughs> I mean, but think about it, people. You didn't marry pure evil. Maybe you did, and if you did, this is not the place for you right now. <laughs> the police station is a much better choice. So for the vast majority of us, and there are evil people out there, I get it. But for the vast majority of us, we married just a regular, normally dysfunctional individual. <laughs> it's sin, baby. Yeah. So there's no escaping it. So you, you didn't marry someone perfect, ergo, 
hurt is going to occur. They're going to disappoint you. They're going to let you down. They're going to frustrate you. What matters is how do you react? And it's about you because that's what Christ is worried about. Christ says in the New Testament, I don't care when you treat people who treat you well good. I don't because dirt bags and tax collectors and right criminals can do that. I care how you treat someone who isn't behaving very well for example oh here we go all right i'm gonna come over here so i think said, these people like me a little more the Lord sorry said, go and make disciples and so i have tried to take it very seriously <laughs> the last several years where i am discipling men on a one-on-one -on -one basis oh. once a week okay yes and i had sean coming to the house now, oh, oh, I know what we're talking group, about. <laughs> I had a group of pastors coming over to talk about this marriage strategy that I'll be sharing while we're here in country. <laughs> and they were going to come and I was cooking for them because I think that's a cool thing to do. So I had like four pastors coming to our house. The night before, this was like a Wednesday night, I think you have prayer service. Mm -hmm. She said, hey, just make sure and pick up because I don't want it to be messy when those pastors come, which is, is that understandable, ladies? Totally cool. And I got that. And we cleaned up. You came home and you said, it oh was, my gosh, you did such a good job cleaning. It was dark. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and just say that. And I didn't it. go in the bathrooms. She said it. And so I was like, sweet. Because I, I was surprised. Yeah. I assumed she'd come home and be like, eh, you missed some stuff, which is fine. And I would have picked it up or cleaned or whatever. And then the next morning happened. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. No. No. Because she woke up, and suddenly it was very unacceptable. <laughs> Which was, gentlemen, does that, does that not get a little confusing? Like, last night, I got praised. <laughs> this morning, I'm getting torn a new one. <laughs> And I don't know what's going on. I'm like, what are you talking about? Nothing is clean. <laughs> that's my angry Amy voice. Yeah, that's the angry Amy. Sorry. And so now you kind of got rolling. Well, right. Right. And you know what? And this is at the place when, when, oh, this is another case in point right now, right? Are we ready for this? Okay. Are you all listening? Women, okay? Do I have a different perspective than him right now about what just happened? What happened? Yes. And okay. Gentlemen. Is our perspective always correct? Yes. Okay. Because so. The Lord said that. Uh, okay. So this is this is what I'm going to share with you right now. Does it actually matter in the long run that I have a different perspective than he does? No. What matters? Right. What matters is that we get to the end and that we honor each other and that we figure it out and that we, we walk away friends. That's buddies and reconnected. That's the end goal, right? And so we walk away lovers. Lovers. Okay. Friends and lovers. Yes, babe. Friends with benefits. Yes. Yeah. No, more than that. Bonded. Yes. One. Um, anyway, so that's the end goal, right? So if that's the end goal, then me arguing, and basically I could be telling you things like, I woke up at 5 a.m. to look at the bathrooms that were disgusting. We don't have people cleaning. It's Amy. And I have a full-time job. And so not only do I have a full-time job, but I'm also the full-time maid as well, a housekeeper as well. So when I wake up at 5 a.m. and I look at our bathroom is really bad and the guest bathroom is really bad, and then the kitchen is all sticky everywhere, there's all this stuff that now I am cleaning. And as I'm cleaning this, I'm asking Michael to help me. And he was not exactly helping me. And so he's back there going, it's all good. It's all good. And I'm like going, it's not good. Nice yeah, exactly. At that point, I don't even remember what I said the night before. There were other things happening to I, you. I, <laughs> yes, possibly, yes. Chemically, I'm just saying. Emotionally, yes. It, it was. I, I'll be honest. Yes. It was a little, <laughs> so yes. Things start to get a little bit heated because I start to get defensive. How many of you have ever gotten defensive? And how'd that work? Not so Somehow good. it doesn't calm the situation. 
So I get defensive over, what is wrong with you? You said last <laughs> yeah. night everything was good. Now that sets her off, and that was a dishonoring way to word that. But I did start helping and cleaning up. And I'll tell you where the morning got really crazy is, and there is no way I'm going to allow you to change the details of this. <laughs> okay. I am in the back, <laughs> literally cleaning. Oh. And I have things in my arms. I am in the backyard cleaning, in the act of cleaning. Do we understand what I was doing? <laughs> she comes out into the back, looks at me and goes, oh, and you're not even going to pick up the backyard. <laughs> and I have things in my arms that I have picked up from the backyard. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually picking up right now. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> Storms out. And I'm like, wow. So I finished picking up, but then I have this guy I'm discipling coming over, <laughs> and I got to be honest, I'm terrified. Because <laughs> you know when you get riled up, it anything can, can happen. It can get a little ugly. Yeah. yeah. And terrifying. <laughs> and so he's coming over. Well, I see him pulling into our driveway. I'm like, oh, Lord, she's not a happy camper. And so I go, I don't even show my face in the bathroom, I don't think. I, don't I was way too afraid. So I just kind of went in. I was like, I, I've got to try to give her a heads up that there is now a guy I'm discipling. So let's not attack and shame me right now. So I kind of open the door and go, hey, Sean's here. No, this is what he said. He goes, I just want to let you know Sean is about to come into our house. Just now saying. Gotta look like Christian. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought it would be safer to meet with Sean out on the back porch. And so I actually put him in a chair that was facing these big windows we have and in back into the house. I put him in a chair that was, you know, the back was facing the house because I knew she was, I did. That's that so smart. mean. That is smart. <laughs> that is because you want to know what I can see. I'm looking at this man I'm discipling and in my house. I can see my wife storming. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at me. <laughs> bam and bam and throwing children across the floor. I'm like, oh gosh, yes, tell me more about it. <laughs> oh no, put the knife down. That's so not It true. was hectic. <laughs> it was, I left for work. And then you left, thank God. I did not even I did not even, I did not even storm. I, I actually prayed it through and, and thought about it and said, Amy, hold it together, get it together, start reacting better. You can do this. And honestly, for Wait, me, it's not over. Yet. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> what I else? Be perfectly clear. Oh. Now, by looking at me, I'm assuming you just figure I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why with personal responsibility, the goal and I'm not drunk, by the way, because I keep slurring, don't I? No, I haven't oh, heard it. I, I hear it. I'm very sensitive to it because I was born and had a severe speech impediment. And when I get <coughs> tired, when Daniel and the Marga took us to Constitutional Hill, do you know how long that hill is to walk? <laughs> In I'm like, I don't even want freedom anymore. <laughs> Freaking freedom. I just made a bench. I almost got hit by a bus. Yeah. I mean, like, for real. <laughs> One bus came by, I was like, whoa, that was close. And I'm like, back in the street. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there was okay. a bus right behind it. Focus. But I get distracted. And so with personal responsibility, a big key is to be able to own your own junk. And not in a shameful way, because Christ loves you, has forgiven you, and God sees you as perfect because of what Christ did for you. However, we're still here. There's still sin and you should be aware of your own faults. Not in a, again, not in a condemning, shameful way, in a responsible way that says, hey, I got issues, so what am I gonna worry about her issues for? I got plenty of my own to focus on. I need to, I need to let her go and let you and you deal with your stuff with God, and I need to deal with my stuff with God. And so, uh, maybe like an hour after you like Sean had already left and now I'm just getting ready and the pastor starts showing up and I get a text message. Oh yeah. Now we yeah. have not repaired this yet. 
right? So we had had a rough morning, not brutal, but it was rough, hurtful, shaming, critical. I was embarrassed. Embarrassing. And so now these pastors are showing up, and I literally get a text on my phone, and she's asking me. I said I'm sorry first. Yes. It feels really good, though, when they say I'm sorry, but would you mind doing this favor for me? So she wanted me to bail her out of intensives that she had overcommitted to. We do these things called marriage intensives. They're one-on-one programs. And... And so there I am. And this is why I love loving Christ. Because if you love Christ and obey his commands, you get the gift of because the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit literally make a home with you. Mm-hmm. And when, when, you, when you love Christ, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you, is going to give you wisdom, is going to do things that are supernatural because innately I am selfish. Okay, and so are you, in case you're wondering. Even you codependent ones, super selfish. And so, and so I see this text. My first fleshly thought is, wow, how nice to ask for a favor when I got treated so cruddy this morning. But then the Holy Spirit's voice comes in, and how did I reply? Uh, I don't think I did. <laughs> I'm not looking very heroic right now. (laughs) I think the pastors were there, but eventually I responded, and what did I say? You said you would help me. I said I would help her. That is the essence of personal responsibility. Did I want to help her? Seriously, did I want to help her? Under no circumstances was I interested in helping her that day, especially since these were going to be weekend intensives, Back to back. I definitely didn't want to do that. There was no part of me that wanted to help. However, I do have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what do you think he told me? Help her. Piggy. (laughs) Right? It's like, who am I to judge her when I have so much of my own stuff? And at the end of the day, Jesus said that, and I told the guys this before we watched the rugby match, the two most important things on earth are to honor God, honor others, and honor myself. Those are three things. Now it feels uncomfortable. I said two, and I gave three. It's okay. This is what happens when you take me on Constitutional Hill. I might as well be drunk. And so... You are not going to want to do a lot of things that are good for your relationship. What we're trying to tell you in this first little bit here is you have to choose to do the right thing. And the right thing will always be to love God and love others, to serve God and serve others, to lay your life down. Jesus said, I loved you, so I expect for you to go and love others As I loved you, how did Christ love us? He was a sacrifice. And so for me, yes, it may have been difficult to say yes. And I just don't want you to get hung up on the feelings of wanting to do the right thing. Because rarely are you going to have these altruistic feelings, especially in a marriage. Because it's too intimate. Right? You, you know each other too well, which means you know the good and the, yeah, the good and the ugly. But I, I just want to say that there's a part the of... The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. But Michael and I, you, you know how I was saying that, okay, so the, the people that are, are engaged, okay, so you guys have that positive view of each other already. You guys have that. What I hope is that the people that have been married for a long time, I hope that you've been given the gifts of sacrifice. You've been given the gifts of to each other of serving each other. Michael and I have been, have given each other those gifts where we do them and it is not with strings attached. We do them. And if you don't have those in your marriage, you need to start to give them to each other. 
like Michael saying to me, not, oh, well, you know, yeah, right. Now you want it. Now you want a favor after you treated me so poorly and blah, 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 blah. He, did he do that? Mm -mm. We, uh, the way that I remember it is I did say that I was sorry and I did, and I did wait a little while and I did wait a little while, but you have to understand I was I literally felt like I was going to have a nervous breakdown. I mean, so, th like, the idea of people coming into my home was, like, just the it, it just sent me over the edge. I mean, it literally did. I, I was like, oh, my gosh, I cannot imagine, you know, people coming to my house, and then I've got that, and then I've got this, and this, and this, and that. I've got all this stuff. I was like, I, I've got, I'm literally about to fall apart. And so Michael taking over that weekend, because I basically had two yeah, days two off. Weekends. And, and if I don't have those two days off, then I have to go a whole nother week before I can have two days off. And then I would have a whole nother. I mean, I wouldn't have had a day off for like three or four weeks in a row. It, it just would nuts. I was literally going nuts. And so there's a part of me that that was, that was what was going on with me. And so Michael being able to step up and to, he not only did one weekend, but he did two weekends in a row. So one would have been great, but I was like, can you maybe do both of them? And he was like, all right, yeah, I can do both. Yeah, I can, I can do it. I can do it. I won't have a weekend off for like two or three months, but I can do it. Um, you know, because he has, you know, he has a little bit more time during the week, but still, it's a lot that I was asking of him. And being able to understand that and giving each other those gifts, please do that. I know it's hard because we want to say, look what I've done for you. Now, what are you going to do for me? That's what you want to say. But the more you're able to say, you know what, I'm doing it because it's what God has called me to do. Because not only are, am I going to get a benefit in, in our relationship, in our marriage, but we get a well done from God. God says, well done, Amy. Well done. You are loving well. Well done, Michael. You are loving well. Now I am able to smile with pride and say, that's my daughter. That's my son. They're laying down their lives for each other. Well, what wow. Say, there is no greater love than he who lays down his life. So what you have to get in your heads is, believe it or not, this world isn't about you. It's about you loving God and loving others. And your spouse, your boyfriends and girlfriends, your children, your neighbor, your church, your church family, they fit into that other category. But you get so hung up on what you think you deserve mm -hmm. and what your rights are. And what I tend to tell people is the only right you really have is to die. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Outside of that, you got none. Because your only goal is to love God and love others. That's it. And so when goofy things happen, and, and here's like the biggest part for me is that I felt a little bit like in the morning when I agreed to help that I turned the other cheek. That was a, that was a, that was a living example of turning the other cheek because I wasn't treated well, but I honored her and valued you in return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think she stayed in a negative place? Not even close. I mean, no. before yeah. I even turned the, well, I think, I feel like a little bit, I turned the other cheek a little bit when I didn't engage, yes. especially when I was yes. outside. Yes, you didn't. I just chose to keep quiet. Like, it's not going to help. Don't get jerky back. But then, I mean, what I, can... I want you to understand is I'm telling you, when you love someone unconditionally, as unconditionally as you can, they react in kind. They are not going to stay in that place. They just won't. I don't know what the time limit is. I just know Jesus said, you don't get out of that until you're dead. That's it. And so for us, the foundation to any healthy relationship is taking responsibility for your own reactions and behavior towards the other person. You got to worry about you. Our book has a cover, on the cover of it has a big old mirror because you need to just look in the mirror. And I promise you, 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 when you honor God and honor others, you can't lose, right? Christ said there, when they give the fruit of the spirit, it says there is no law against these things. So when you are kind in return, patient in return, 
loving in return, forgiving in return. When you do those things, you win. Whether that person changes or not is irrelevant because you're doing the right thing. But the good news is that they're probably not pure evil and they're going to respond. It's very difficult to remain bitter at someone or unhealthy towards someone when they're treating you so well. It just breaks down the wall. Well, and it's what we get with Christ. So, why don't we take a break? Yeah. I think it would be a good time. That's, yeah. Let's take a break for coffee and conversation. Well, 10, 15 minutes, yeah. Mm -hmm.